Hello Scala community! In this second tutorial, I'd like to showcase a sharding example using the FS2 library, one of my favorites in the Scala ecosystem. So I already created this uh, application called Tutorial2, which creates a number, a range of numbers from 1 to 10 using a stream and evaluates every single element by printing it out into the console. So if we run this, we should get exactly the numbers from 1 to 10 into the console. Perfect. So the difference between a list and a stream is that a stream can be possibly infinite and it, it'll process the, the elements in constant memory and it can evaluate effects as it processes every single element in a purely functional way. In, that, in this case, the effect type is of uh, cat effect IO which preserves referential transparency. So let's introduce the, the use case. I created this graphic to illustrate the problem. I want to thank my ex-colleague Filippo for proposing this challenge. Actually, he had a real use case using Kafka streams. But basically, we get a, a source of numbers from 1 to n. It could be possibly infinite. In this case, I made it finite numbers from 1 to 10 so we can see what is the result we expect and we get a fixed number of shards in this case 3 and we want to evenly distribute the processing of every single element across different shards the number of shards it's a fixed number in this case is 3 right uh, the, the, the way we can uh, get the number of the shard is by doing a uh, element modulo the number of shards. So if we process 1 modulo 3, it gives us the number 1, which is the number of the shard. If we do 3 modulo 3, it gives us 0, which is the number of the shard. So we process the element 3, 6, and 9 in the shard 0, and so on. So we want to keep the sequentiality across different shards, but we can run the other things in parallel. So let's see how we can achieve that in, in, in FS2. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is when I mean uh, processing the, the elements, I mean anything. Processing could be publishing to a Kafka topic, persisting to a database, or it could just simply be uh, printing it out into the console. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be printing out the number of the shard and the element to make sure that we are processing the element in a sequential manner and in the specific shard. Um, so the action is going to be represented as an IOF unit that could be any anything. So I'm going to start defining that action. I'm going to call that uh, show shard and value. And it's going to take the number of the shard, the element, and it's going to return an IOF unit representing, in this case, printing it out to the console. So you get the shard, the value, called put string line. And I say shard it's going to be S and the value is going to be V. So far so good. Now we need to define a function that will actually create this uh, sharding logic. I'm going to call it sharded. It's going to take the number of the shards as an integer and the action. The action is going to be basically taking the number of the shard, the element, and returning an I of unit. In our case, it's going to be the show shard and value. And finally, it's going to take a source, which we are going to be representing using FS2 stream of I O and integer. This could be a polymorphic stream. Let's say we are processing messages. Um, so we can make it polymorphic. But in this case, I'm going to keep, keep it simple. And we're going to return an I of a, a stream of I of units. So in order to keep the sequentiality, uh, I'm going to be using a queue. Um, FS2 provides uh, a concurrent queue, and we have different different uh, ways to create a queue. I'm going to be using a bounded queue uh, that has the effect of type I O, and it will save values of type int. So we are going to need as many queues as shards 
In this case, we have three different shards, so we need three different cues. Uh, so we can use this, uh, oh, I forgot to give it the max uh, bound value. I'm gonna use uh, 100 values per queue. That, that should be enough. So I, I need as many queues as shards. In this case, I will need three different queues per shard. So we can use this method called replicate A, which works for any applicative. And it's gonna create three different queues and gives us this gives these three different queues in a list. So the number of uh, queues we are gonna create is represented by this number of shards. And given that we get a list, we need, we need a specific way to associate um, a specific shard with a, a specific queue. So we can uh, zip, actually I need to map this. Yeah, so we get a list of uh, queue, right? Here we get a, a list of queue of i of int. So I need to associate this queue to a specific shard. So I can zip uh, this queue uh, with the index. So I get a list of a tuple of the queue and the number of the shard. But since we want to access uh, the, we, we want to access every single queue using the shard number, we need to swap the order of this tuple in such case, I'm gonna use map swap. So swap, yep. And this gives us a tuple of int and q. So far, so good. And I'm converting this to a map. Now I'm gonna flat map on these streams and I'm gonna get access to this list of maps representing uh, our key value store. I'm gonna call that KVs. And now I can basically start uh, processing our source stream. Basically doing a flat map, we access every single element. I'm gonna call this n. And here I need to access the specific queue for the given shard. So I'm gonna create a queue. I'm not gonna create a queue, basically I'm gonna take it from that map. So we get these key values, which is a map of int representing the shard number and the specific queue associated to that shard. So we use, we use the apply method of the, of the map to get access to this queue. So the index is gonna be uh, the element modulo the number of shards. Um, so this apply will actually throw an exception if the, the index doesn't exist, of the, if the element uh, doesn't exist. But in this case, we are creating that map and then we are accessing that map. So it's all created in a local scope. We have full full control of that. So this is pretty pretty much safe. We don't need to worry, worry about that. This, is nev this will never fail. So we get access to the queue and then we need to enqueue that value in, in the specific queue for the shard. So I'm gonna call queue and q one and queue the single element n and concurrently, dequeuing from this uh, de this queue, there is a dequeue method that uh, gives us a stream, and we call eval map, and we are going to be using our action to dequeue per per different shard. So this action takes um, number of the shard, which is going to be again, and modulo the number of shards and then takes another integer, which is the element. That element comes from the eval map. So we are pretty much done using that. I guess that's it. Oh, I think I forgot a parenthesis or a bracket somewhere here. Yeah, the string eval here. Perfect. So this concurrently function uh, from FS2, um, it's gonna run the supply stream in the background as the elements from from the publishing stream it uh, are, are being pulled. Um, so it's a very powerful function and it's, you know, we, we don't need to care so much about all the concurrency uh, corner cases. Um, you know, if we work uh, in, a, in a different way, we, we just like, delegate all this responsibility to FS2 and the, the library itself is gonna handle that. So let's, let's try uh, our example here. 
So we're gonna be use calling this shard, sharded method with uh, number of shards is equals three, and our action is gonna be show shard and value. Finally, our source is gonna be this stream with numbers from one to ten, and that should be it. Okay, so let's run this and see what we get. Boom. That's super cool. We get we print out only the number of the shard and the value. And if we take a look at the shard 0, we are processing the value 3, 6 and 9 and that matches our our illustration here. And the same with the shard 1 and 2, we process the values in, in, in a sequential manner using different shards. And so that's the way, that's one way to achieve it using the, the FS2 library. I think it, this is pretty much simple, um, easy to understand, and we don't need to deal with any concurrency current cases. So that, that's it for today. This is a tutorial I had using FS2, but I'd like to show very briefly a few other solutions uh, using only Zio and all the also that effect. This solution uh, was written by an ex colleague of mine and principal engineer, Fred, which uses a Zio, um, a, a Zio Q as well, um, and it doesn't use any streaming principle. It, it only uses a list. But we what we can possibly do to po process infinite uh, elements is just. Uh, doing a, a, a stream eval and, and, and delegating the logic of uh, sharding to the effect type. In this case, it's going to be seal. Uh, I invite you to take a look at this. Um, uh, and it's the same could be written using cat's effect. Basically the same. This is, I, I adapted uh, his code to use only cat's effect. Um, in my case, I prefer using FS2 because I think it's uh, more concise and we don't need to deal with a uh, thinking about fibers and you know forking forking fibers and threads we just delegate that to the library and we use it like in a control flow way um, so that's all I have today I hope you enjoy it and please let me know if you would like to see any other tutorials and thank you for watching mm -hmm.